In this video, I will walk you through how to calculate the depreciation expense that you're to use on the operating section of the Statement of Cash Flows for Problem 12-7A. If you look at the, the problem, they tell us in the additional data section at the bottom of underneath the income statement in number 3 that all depreciation expense is in the selling expense. So the selling expense, if you look at the income statement, is $18,000. What we don't know is how much of this $18,000 is depreciation. It could be all $18,000. It could be half of it, you know, $9,000. It could be $1. It could be $5. We just don't know. And so, therefore, we have to do further analysis to figure out how much of that selling expense is actually depreciation. And in order to do that, we're going to have to analyze this account called accumulated depreciation with the T account. And so I have taken these numbers right up here, this accumulated depreciation number, I've taken these right off the balance sheet. We'll take the beginning amount, the ending amount, and figure out what changes happen. So the first thing we do is we take the beginning balance, which is the 24000 and we plug it in right here because we know what the beginning balance was. They tell us that on the balance sheet. And then the ending balance is 32000 which would go right here. And so our challenge now is to figure out uh, how much this account changed. Did it go down any? Did it go up any? Um, but before we do that, we need to understand some important relationships in, in this account called accumulated depreciation. The first thing I'm going to tell you with accumulated depreciation, uh, and again, I've got it down here at the bottom. I've just transferred that over. Here's our beginning balance and our ending balance, um, is it can only be credited for one reason, and that is if we take, and I'll draw your attention up here, and we record depreciation expense. In other words, we debit depreciation expense. That's how we make depreciation expense go up. We credit accumulated depreciation for some number. So this entry right up here would be the only time that accumulated depreciation would ever have a credit entered into that, trend, into that account. And so you can see that's if we record the depreciation. So if we can figure out what this number is, it tells us what our depreciation expense will be. But before we do that, we need to figure out, did this accumulated depreciation account go down at all? And to understand that, we need to take a look back at this equipment account. So this thing is buried in here like three layers deep. So just bear with me here. I'll show you how we figure out uh, if accumulated depreciation has gone down. The only way accumulated depreciation goes down is if we get rid of an asset, equipment, that has some associated accumulated depreciation. Let me explain. What they tell us in uh, number two in the additional data is that during the year equipment was sold uh, for $8,500 cash, and I've just kind of summarized that up here. We sold the equipment for $8,500 cash. It had a cost of $18,000 and a book value of $8,500. So if I look at equipment, that means that my cost was $18,000, and the problem tells me I sold it, got rid of it. So when I sell it, I have to take and credit this account for all of the cost of that equipment. So that entire equipment went away. There happened to be no increases in this account. And so it's gone. So I have zero amount left. Now when I get rid of equipment, I have to also get rid of any associated accumulated depreciation that goes along with that equipment to properly account for it. Hang in there. Uh, and so to figure out how much accumulated depreciation there was associated with that equipment, I have to use the data given up here. And so the formula we need to understand is that I take my cost, $18,000, I subtract any accumulated depreciation along with that equipment that I just sold, and that gives me this thing called book value. The cost of the equipment was $18,000. I don't know how much uh, accumulated depreciation there was, but they do give me the book value. So this is the missing link right here, this $8,500. So what this tells me is 18, this is 18,000 minus X equals 8,500. Well, I know that X equals $9,500 just by using simple algebra. And so what this tells me, if, you're, if I haven't lost you yet, 
is that this $9,500, when I sold this equipment down here, I got rid of the $18,000, but I also had to get rid of any accumulated depreciation that was already recorded for this equipment, which we just figured out was $9,500. So what I do is I take this $9,500 and I drop it in right here. So I'll just write that in here. And that tells me now if I can do this algebra, I start with 24,000 in accumulated depreciation. I subtract uh, 9,500 and then I would add X, which is this number, and that equals 32,000. And so this number, if you do that algebra, is 17,500. So if I didn't lose you along the way there, I know this was complicated and layered. This number right here, the 17500 since it was the amount the accumulated depreciation went down, and I'll take you all the way back to this transaction here, whenever accumulated depreciation uh, goes up, right, uh, that means that I had this transaction up here, which meant I would have recorded my depreciation expense. And so therefore, this number is the 17500 that's the number you will use on the statement of cash flows.